Hello guys, today I'll be showing you a quick tutorial on uh, photo scanning. So we'll be using Meshroom, an uh, open source free uh, application. You can download it from this uh, site. And when you run the Meshroom application, it looks just like this. So I'll just show you quickly uh, how to make uh, the photo scan from your photos. I've already done a simple test with my cell phone camera. I was just walking in a park and just took some photos with, uh, with just a regular cell phone camera, nothing fancy, and the results were pretty cool. Of course, you can always do better photos, so depending on the quality of the, of the photos, uh, in the final mesh and, uh, and especially the textures will be a better quality. The more and the better quality photos, it produces better, better quality results. Here are the photos. As you can see, nothing really fancy, just a simple piece of a tree with a nice mushroom, kind of like mushroom scanned with mushroom. So let's take a look at the photos. There are 21 of these and they are taken from a specific location so, so that uh, the camera is placed like orbiting around the object. We have photos from different angles. It's quite important to keep the main object that we're interested in uh, in the center of the shot so that the program has some data to collect from the photos and also these are already photos that I selected from a little bit more of the photos that they were kind of blurry so it's quite important to to have the main subject in focus. It needs to be sharp. The sharper it is the better so that uh, the scan can give us some detail. It's also good to make some photos from above. As you can see it's no big deal. Now let's drop the images into our Meshroom. You can just drag and drop. It reads the photos. Start analyzing. And you can go make yourself a cup of tea or um, you just gotta remember about saving the project. So let's quickly save it and then just run. And as you can see here in this graph editor, it shows you the progress of, of the process. This window here you can see the result of our scan so you can see the scan is pretty cool looking so that's it for mushroom and we can just right now import this to blender Let's first clean up the scene and let's go to File, Import, OBJ. That's the format uh, that comes out from Meshroom. Let's just import this to our Blender file. It takes some time because the mesh is pretty dense, so we'll eventually uh, decimate the geometry a little bit so that we can get a file to easier to handle, a little bit rotated, so let's rotate it. Nice scanned mesh, and as you can see, it just doesn't have the Textures are applied, and uh, in fact, there is a texture, but we'll need to maybe make this a node editor window on the mesh settings to the materials. We need to switch the cycles to be able to see it. And let's use nodes and let's give it a principled shader and just connect an image texture that is already uploaded to the file right here. And we, if we go here to material view now, you can see that it's all pretty textured and ready to, to just make a 3D scene out of our part of a tree, really, so... And as, as you can see, when we go to edit mode, it's a crazy amount of triangles, really, so we we'll just apply a decimal modifier, 0 0.5 the face count comes down to half of it. And let's apply this. And now let's turn to proportional editing and let's just wrap it up a little bit. So Yeah, you can see just like I'm trying to hide some imperf imperfections. Uh, uh, this is not a perfectly like super high quality scan. So just to make sure that the final shot will look quite decent, we'll cover up some imperfections, we'll also add some dead leaves here and an HDRI. So 
So now let's try adding a leaf. So let's import image displays. Of course you need the add-on enable, but it's pre-installed, so in user preferences you can in enable the image displays. And let's import a file that I downloaded from a cool site uh, called CG Bookcase, also a free texture site, pretty cool stuff. Let's make sure that it follows our principled shader, so we'll just mix two of these with a factor of alpha mask. But let's now let's just use our Ctrl Shift T and choose all of the maps. Let's get rid of the unnecessary nodes so that we have a clear view. We need uh, this one more thing for that. We'll need to just another texture so let's copy this node and let's add the transparency mask let's connect this to our factor and and here we have our leaf let's just cut it ctrl r a few times and cut this maybe so many times and now let's do some proportional editing maybe with a smooth fall off have some fun with it that's one way of making the leaves, and you could make a variation of this, this kind of leaves, or just to make our workflow really fast and efficient, let's go and use Grasswold. Let's use nodes for our background, and let's set up an HDRI from HDRI Haven, and we'll use We'll use a file that has some auto mood. This one will do. Let's make it to a rendered view. Let's see, it already looks pretty cool. Let's also turn on the filmic color management. Let's do it high contrast. And what we can see that uh, there's a lot of space in the shot that needs to be filled. Just like cover this area with a plane, scale it up, maybe just subdivide it a few times and give it some fractal deformation so that it's a little bit uneven. And we'll set this up as our Grasswold particle emitter. If you want to learn something more about Grasswold, just check out our tutorial about uh, making a picnic scene. Uh, there's a more in-depth look in the, on this particular uh, add-on, it's a paid add-on, so if you want to like follow uh, follow along just making this with uh, only free tools, you just need the, the kind of kind of variation of the, this kind of this, these leaves and set up the plane as an emitter of a particle system uh, set to hair and instead of growing hair you just choose to enter object or a group of objects, if you pick up the leaf, it spawns uh, copies of uh, the selected object. You just need to randomize it a bit and, and give it some variation, like more kinds of leaves. Have some fun with the particle system. The Grasswold add on just gives us a predefined uh, set of different uh, dead leaves and stuff. So just let's Choose the dead leaves here, increase the density, maybe let's do it like 100 and a particle size to maybe 3, just like that and just le let's add another one here. Make them older so we have some color variation. Let's duplicate this plane. And let's add moss. Okay, so I tweaked uh, the moss here a little bit, set up the camera. Well, also, I added an empty object here, snapped it to the mushroom, and we'll use that for a focal point. Let's choose the object, I called it focus. Let's make a focal stop and see how it looks like 
when we go to render preview it's pretty cool and we could make a static shot just like this but to make this really cool let's make a falling leaf animation So now let's connect this window and change this to our timeline and let's have some fun with animating this. Let's add the leaf here and to really make this falling. To achieve this we can right click clear keyframes so that we do this from scratch. Right now we have all the frames clear so that the camera is not moving. Let's take a look at the falling leaf first and just press I, location, rotation, scale, and this is keyframing all of these factors here so that the position, rotation, and the scale of the object is keyframed for frame 0 and setting this up for frame, for example. 35, let's make it fall down. Move the cursor to our object. Let's rotate it a bit so that it's falls rotating and also press I and location, rotation, scale. And when you play with the animation you can see that the leaf is starting to fall between the keyframes. So it's just like calculating the movement for us and, and it just stops there because we have no further motion. Now let's repeat the steps and add the further keyframes for the, for the leaf movement. Let's make it closer to the camera. You can do just the same with the camera. Yeah, so you can just play around with it, to see how it looks. I also tweaked the lighting a little bit, just adding a simple sun lamp to make this area brighter. And of course, added some cool effects in the post-production. But I wanted to keep this uh, tutorial short. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and just go out there and scan something. And make something cool with it and show off your cool works. Don't scan too much because it's, uh, it might turn dangerous. You can, you can just suck you in to Blender. And you might just be polygonized. Uh, you really turn uglier in 3D. Well, there's always sculpt mode and the smooth brush. <laughs>